Okay, welcome Saturday morning. Today is the 27th of March. So let's get right into it. <clears throat> Here we go. The Homeland <laughs> Homeland Interior Secretary. Okay, the Homeland, the Department of Homeland Security. The guys fired everybody. <laughs> he just went in and literally just uh, kiboshed the entire, one of his biggest uh, moves that he's done since he's been in office. And he just fired a bunch of people because of the mismanagement of the southern border. These are a lot of Trump officials that were still holding on to their jobs Why this massive border crisis is happening. Uh, we are experiencing just something we've never really seen on the southern border. So he just fired a bunch of people and he's using unpaid experts to try to guide him through this crisis because as we can all see, you know, never let a good crisis go to waste. He has, uh, you know, completely botched his job. So what do you do? You go fire the majority of the people that were actually trying to orchestrate his debacle and Biden's open border policy telling people to rush the border. Now it is, it is federal law to take in these unaccompanied minors and uh, the Biden administration is still pushing for minors to make the 3,000 mile trek to the U.S. border, which is deadly dangerous and there is deaths being caused and brutality at the hands of cartels and human trafficking. So, you know, this is bad for, for all of us. Biden needs to stop this immediately, immediately. It is federal law if these minors hit our borders, including people, you know, seeking uh, safe haven here, uh, that we have to take them in. And, and we shouldn't be the, the world's, uh, I guess you'd say, during a pandemic that we've suffered greatly throughout the United States. And we can't even get our kids to school in some places. You can't go to a restaurant to eat. You can't get life back to normal. We are now taking in as many of Central South America and the world's uh, unaccompanied minors. So this is a disaster. It needs to be handled immediately. Uh GOP senators, which brings me on the fact that GOP senators are closing, calling for closing the border. I mean, really actually closing the border, not what we're being told is happening now, but to really close it. Everybody, migrant, minors, everybody, done, shut it down. We, we have to solve this immigration crisis. We cannot take in the world's, the entire world's needy. This is, you know, talking over 4 billion people in the world. If we don't get a handle on this, we're going to see more people than we than, than has ever come to the shores of America within the next few months. So the GOP senators are getting together, a group of them saying, we got to close the border. We have to close the border. It's imminent. This is a, a major threat to America. Uh, border patrol is overwhelmed. Cartels are making billions and billions of dollars off of human trafficking and drug smuggling right now. Billions. They are, and, and the human cost down there is insane what's happening to these kids and other minors and other people. People are just being trafficked by drug cartels. That fentanyl is flooding our borders. We're being flooded with heroin, meth, everything else. This needs to stop immediately. Immediately we need to be get control of the border. We need to hold Homeland Security liable and the Biden administration liable for the death and despair that's being caused. We cannot handle the world's sick and poor it's it's we've been through too much we can't do this we're we're signing trillion dollar bills just to keep the economy afloat of funny money this is a big one border, border patrol is overwhelmed overwhelmed 10 percent of the migrants that are being held the children are testing positive for covid which would be the new brazilian strain the majority of them we can't handle this at this time 10 percent positive on the tests that they've tested so far. We all know the COVID tests sometimes don't show that false negatives, false positives. Okay, Border Patrol overwhelmed 100,000 people. 100,000 people in the month of February, 30 days has been known of, has so far crossed our borders, okay? 100,000 people that we know of has crossed our borders. Big, big deal. In February, uh, yeah, through February, a uh, big thing that the Biden administration is using for lack of media coverage on the southern border is due to the COVID outbreak. Now, you know, instigating people to come to our borders through the Biden administration's policies and the rhetoric from prior during the, the election uh, has caused this exact crisis with COVID on the southern border. Free media, free press could ne should never be stifled by government or by other media moguls. This is this needs to be covered by by independent media and the United States government and the Biden administration needs to allow full access to everything. 
everything by the independent media. All independent media should be down there. We should be down there on steroids, down there taking care of everybody, down there just watching what's happening, reporting the truth and the facts and the numbers to the American people because we cannot handle another huge surge of the Brazilian strain, let alone the regular strains of COVID. We've been through too much. Um, okay, so we got to get things back to normal. The economy is floating off funny money. Uh, this, this everything bubble is all due to funny money being being pushed into uh, into America by false COVID bills that are just throwing just cash that doesn't exist in every direction. They can't keep up with the amount of cash and and hard currency that needs to be printed for this amount of funny money. So remember, everything is happening now. The everything bubble, the housing, the insane housing rent bubble. Uh, the, the increase in products, goods, and services is all caused by this massive COVID stimulus. We are not back to normal. The GDP is not running like it should. It is all being orchestrated by trillions and trillions of dollars being thrown into everything, sopped up by major investors, sopped up by the top elites, by the, the global elites, the global money men. You know, we're talking billions and billions and billions of dollars a day are being sopped up by these major hedge funds and different investments when the, the, the economy is still in the trash. You know, it, it, it's just all being propped up. It's all funny money. The housing market should not be $400,000 a house for a basic house, 300000 for a basic house. No, that's all fake. It's all profiteering. It's all profiteering. Everything's increasing. Inflation's increasing. Gas prices are going through the roof. No one's talking about it very much. It's like this, this. But it's affecting everybody. You know, there you got a, a major portion of the population that's suffering immensely. And you have a massive population that's being subsidized through federal subsidies and state subsidies. And we have workers who are being subsidized on the job just to show up. Why the government's subsidizing them through welfare benefits and, and packages and and you have uh you know other corporations just reaping the benefits off funny money and off this this subsidized workforce that's been going on for the past three decades we've been just subsidizing you know vast amounts of population just to go to work for these people that these these major corporations that are making major amounts of money off subsidized workers that's where the problem's coming in you know nobody should be suffering it, it we we there's too much money that's been thrown out there um, Amazon workers, this is on Amazon not actual news uh, post I watched today. So Amazon workers are having to pee in bottles because they're working so hard so much and they're not getting breaks. Yeah, that, you know, Jeff Bezos is, is one of the highest earners in the world right now. You know, billions and billions of dollars. People are not going because of COVID. They're buying through Amazon, you know, and, and these people are just being worked to death for low wage, low wage. Nobody in Amazon should be making her thirty dollars an hour. And no, Bezos is making so much money. He's making as much as a small country. As some other countries, he's making their entire GDP. You know, this needs to stop. It needs to stop bad. You know, these employees should be making more. Which brings me to everything else in the world being bubbled with with that. When you go to your next restaurant or your next, you know, uh, travel across the, the state or country to because you're working from home. The service industry, the people in the service industry, the manufacturing in industry, the trucking, uh, that we're being worked to death. We're just being just beat against the rocks over funny money everywhere, and uh, you know this massive influx of money that just doesn't exist and shouldn't exist, and people just running around with COVID breaks everywhere. Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Everybody's on vacation. It seems like a good portion is. Why the other portion is just trying to, to keep up with this mass insanity we call the COVID bubble, the COVID bubble. So uh, wages are garbage and people are having to be subsidized, being worked to death. I, I know, you know, working Saturdays, Sundays, people trying to meet demands for products, uh, housing, uh, you know, construction industry, service industry, truck drivers driving mad hours trying to keep themselves afloat. You know, it's really a lot of suffering going on for for a uh, for an economy that's just being propped up by tax dollars, fake fake, you know, money being printed off <coughs> by the uh, Federal Reserve. Something needs to be done about that. The ship's still stuck in the down in uh, 
uh, down in uh, uh, South Central America. What's that? Uh, I can't even remember the name, but the Suez Canal. I don't think Suez Canal. It's the uh, Panama Canal. Still stuck. Uh, transport transport is not getting through. They've it's blocked. They're trying to move it. They can't. That's affecting world trade. Yeah, big deal. They can't move. That's been five days. Uh, Fox News is getting it back after what they what Trump did to and the press secretary did to CNN. So. Kind of what comes around goes around. Looks like Fox is getting, getting that you know the strong arm when it comes to uh, trying to, to cover the the news conferences. So it's pretty funny, but you know, it is what it is, right? Okay. So on to uh, artists in San Francisco. This is what I call stupid on steroids. It's my new, new uh, commentary piece here. It's going to be stupid on steroids. <laughs> so artists in San Francisco are going to get a thousand dollar check, guaranteed income. Uh, because of COVID. So, yeah, they're going to get a check. It's only 130 artists, but, uh, you know, with people pooping in the streets everywhere, people homeless all over San Francisco, you know, let's make sure those artists get a guaranteed income instead of actually getting a job. That would really suck, wouldn't it? You know, just guaranteed income handed to them. I did 100, 130 left in California or in San Francisco, 130 artists left in that area. The rest have pretty much moved to Utah, Texas, Idaho, you know, everywhere else. Okay, when is it time to go back to work for all the uh, online executives and, and uh, office people that are now doing their jobs from, from home? You know, that day is coming. So during the COVID outbreak, everybody's told to go home and to do their conferences and their work from home. Well, uh, you know, this is what's being debated by companies across the world, including Silicon Valley and, and a lot of the high-tech companies, including uh, American Express, Wells Fargo, Amazon, have, believe it or not, a lot of people working from home. Uh, you know, Starbucks CEOs and stuff like that are working from home. Now, now the time has come and is coming for people to actually return back to the office. Now, you know, productivity is being said that it's actually increased since they've been home. So, yeah, that's probably a good possibility without the commute. But remember, millions of people left their home states and left their the comfort of their their uh, office areas or the, the ability to go to work every day in an office building or whatever it is they were required to go to work. Now, they left those areas so they, they can remotely work from home. So they moved into Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, wherever they went, you know, dump the funny money everywhere, increase it, the price of homes where people that actually live in those areas and try to survive cannot afford to Send their kids to get a house. Their kids can't get a house. They, you know, couples can't get a home. They can't get an apartment. People are looking for places to live, but the funny money from their cell is all uh, uh, everything bubble, you know, things. So now these people are gonna. Have, a lot of people that have left. And it's a big warning to you guys. You left your homes in other states where your offices are located to remotely work from home. Been a great big social experiment. Huge social experiment. But like I said in the past, this has been. It's too soon for this type of behavior. This has been a an emergency, a national health emergency, international health emergency. Nothing to do with the, the advancement in real technology. Yes, we have 5G. Yes, you should possibly work from home. Yes. But the time when you have to go back to your company and say, I work in the office and I make a living as an office worker or I work from my office is coming back. It's coming back. You know, a good majority of people are going to have to return back to the office. When you live in Utah and you build a, a $400,000, $500,000 at grossly overpriced home and affected the local economies, now when your company says, oh, we guarantee you're not going to be back to the office, you're not going to have to commute from your home, you can't commute from Utah you just to California. So everybody that bought a home here is thinking about buying a home or in Idaho or in, in, in Texas. Unless your office has moved to that state within commutable distance, you really need to be contacting your companies now and saying, hey, do I have to return back? Because they're looking at September, some in May to return back to work. So everybody remember that out there. You know, no offense if you left those big cities. I wouldn't want to stay a day there. I went to Salt Lake for two days. Good luck. Good luck. You couldn't, you couldn't force me unless I was locked up in a, in a penitentiary up there. Not going to do it. So I'd run too. But we don't make the triple digit figures except for in construction and, and different businesses like that that are all tied to the construction. 
they're all tied to the, to the massive fiat garbage dump of money that doesn't really exist. It was printed out of thin air and just thrown in every direction. So these days are going to end. You know, these days are going to end. Where I, I, my personal opinion, from what I understand, I don't think that, you know, working from remotely from home is going to continue the way it has. You know, things are going to change. If, if, if they get the handle on this COVID-19, like the, the supposedly happening, you know, there will be a return back to work for a, a great majority of the people that have left the, the areas that they, they came from that they could commute normally to their office. If the office hasn't followed them, then it looks like a lot of these companies like Wells Fargo saying 2,000 employees have to return back to work. I hope you're not on that. I really do. Uh, American Express, I hope you're not in there. I hope you're not an employee and you're going to have to return back to work and you moved. I don't think, I hope you're not a part of that, that group, you know, because this is happening. 52% of the people that are working remote, remotely from home want to stay remotely working. But, you know, if, if the pandemic ends, you have to think about this. You're outsourced, to, they've outsourced your job, basically, whether or not you understand this, it is outsourced. Now you're outside, it's not outsourced to another company, but they outsource to a person that's working from their, their basement or from their, their office inside their house. Now, the future looks great for that. It does, but this has been a social experiment due to a pandemic. It's two totally different things. The company comes to you and says, hey, let's go ahead and everybody work from remotely. You're, you're in like sin, you can go for it. But remember, if you're in America, you came to California, went to another state, they can hire somebody from another country or somebody from New York doing the exact same thing. Depending on the wage and what you expect, you have to be able to compete now globally. So your job isn't, I drive to work every day, you know, I'm safe. I'm safe, I show up to my job, I do my work, set my little office space and go home. Now, once you're online and you're not willing to return back to your, uh, to your office, you're not there physically, that job can, is technically outsourced and you're an outsourced employee. So I think there's going to be a real brick wall coming for a lot of people that have just kind of went, you know, ballistic because of COVID. And I, under I understand. I would leave a city if I had the chance. Believe me, I, I work here for a dirt wage just to survive. You know, that's how I live. But now that, that city's come here and <clears throat> really affected everything. <clears throat> so face masks and sanitar sanitary supplies now are going to be tax deductible. Yeah, that's tax deductible. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys have a great day. This is Saturday afternoon, very late. Uh, have to get this more organized. Uh, hope you guys tune in every day and watch my uh, my take on the uh, the news. And remember, always remember, I'm just a paid actor. No, I'm not I'm an unpaid actor. And everything I say can and will be, you know, scrutinized. And I, you know, I'm just I'm just acting, just to cover my legalities. If I say something that offends you. I'm an actor. That's what all news anchors are. And you guys have a great day. Thanks for your support. Hope you guys check in again. Be sure to like and share. Let's build this community. And uh, I'll have tons of tons of my own uh, opinions if you like them. And uh, remember their opinions. So have a great day. Thank you guys very much.